Welcome to the Game Changer Podcast. I'm your host, Elijah Bryant, and we got a special guest with us today. We got Jakari. How you doing? What's up, man? How you doing, Doug? Appreciate you for coming up here. Appreciate you for inviting me, though. Yes, sir. So, let's bring him back. Where you from, and let's talk about your upbringing. So, yeah. So, man, I've been born and raised in Tampa, Florida. You know, basically, I grew up in the church. You know, both mom dudes and pops, pastors. You know, things that have been in church all my life, bro. So, like, you know, and that's literally my upbringing, for real. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yeah. So, I got, you know, a brother that's, like, right below me. And I got um, four sisters. Four yeah, sisters. Bro. Wow. Four, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. All in the same household. Nah, nah. They out, man. I had no, but I'm saying, like, growing up. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, you know, it's it's chicks around the world, so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like that influenced you? I would say not, not, in, not really. You know, I know that... Um, like, my mom, I would say, like, for sure, she influenced me a lot, for real. Like, just seeing her, how she grinds, and, you know, basically her upcoming, you know, from having really nothing, for real, like, to, like, where she is now, like, it really kind of motivated me to be, like, be strong and just really don't ever give up. Yeah. You know, so, like, that's what really motivated me, for real. Got your mom, dudes. Yeah. Hold it bit down. For sure, for sure. That's it. Reminds me of my mom, but... You had any jobs growing up, like in high school? Of course. Well, it was once I got out of high school. Because, like, they, you know, mom and pops, they used to take care of me. So I didn't really have to, you know, really want for nothing. And then they haven't, they wasn't really buying me stuff that I really liked. Mm-hmm. So I was like, they never really told me to go get a job. So I was like, I'm just going to get a job so I can get what I want. Like, right. <laughs> you know, so, and that's how I kind of, like, started. So nobody really had, had to tell me to go get a job. You know, I just kind of just went out there and just, like, I'm just going to get my own money and just buy whatever I want. Facts, facts. Yeah, bro. Did you go to college? A little bit of college. You know, um, I was at community college for a few years. You know, I switched my major a million times. You know, <laughs> first it was music, you know, because I played piano and stuff like that. And then I went to business because I was like, let me get something more serious because music don't pay no bills. Right. You know, and then I, was, then I discovered real estate. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, I got to get into this, get college. You know, like, I wasted time with that, you know, so, and that's what kind of landed me into, like, being interested in real estate altogether. So, what was that first, was it like a YouTube, was it somebody you knew in the past, what was that first introduction into real estate? So, my first introduction was really mom's, like, she, she kind of like, she bought me the course for Christmas one year, and I was like, okay. You know, I still was halfway interested because I was already seeing in my head. I'm like, I can't really. It's not really something I really want to do at the time. So I didn't take it seriously. I let it actually go to waste. So was this a course in wholesaling houses, realtor or being a realtor? Being a realtor. Being a realtor. Yeah, yeah. So like that was that. And um, and it missed me actually doing the class. because I was doing it at first. A guy, you know, um, his wife actually was a realtor. And I was like, you know, I want to talk to, you know, the wife or whatever, so I can kind of, like, get somebody who's a mentor, like, and the wife, you know, um, she was talking to me, she's like, I think you actually like to talk to my husband, you know, and, and that's when I talked to the husband, mm-hmm. and the husband basically told me about, hey, you know you can make money in real estate with, with no license and no money, mm. and I was like, what are you talking about, bro? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, you need a license, man, like, and that's when, you know, he's like, check out this guy. Max Maxwell at the time. Mm. And I was like, all right, man, I'll check him out. So I've been, I was binge watching Max Maxwell for like the longest. And then I was like, bro, forget the license. I'm a wholesale houses. Right. And that's why I just forgot about that. I let the whole course go to waste. And I told him, I was like, listen, I don't want that. I figured out what I want to do. Mm. And that's how that went. So what happened after that? I was off and on, you know, consistent with the wholesale houses. It was tougher than I thought because... You got to not only build rapport, but you got to get the ARV. You know, you got to understand that your cash buyers want at 70 cents on the dollar. You know, all that type of stuff. And I was doing the legwork and things of that nature, you know, um, but I just wasn't getting any deals for real. So I kind of like just, you know, let my motivation get cold, mm. you know, for wholesaling altogether. And just like, you know, I'm going to just, you know, figure out something. And that's why I just went to do whatever a normal person would do is right. like, oh, let me go to a job or something like that. And, you know, 
And that's what I basically did off and on until I came back to wholesaling. You know, um, one Christmas, um, Jerry actually reached out to me, you know. Shout out and, to Jerry. Yeah. And then, um, you know, yeah, he was telling me about, you know, this wholesaling um, course that it, not wholesaling course, but it was a, um, an event they had coming up in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, you know, he was like, you should come or whatever. You know, I couldn't come at the time I had to work at Foot Locker. Yeah. You know, so I just bought the live. <laughs> I bought the live, you know, and, um, you know, it was about wholesaling land. And, you know, um, I got introduced to wholesaling land. I understood it was way more easier. You know, I have to Is work. that when we met? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we met, you know, through association of a guy named Francisco. Francis- Francisco, you know, shout out to my dog, Francisco, man. You know, he actually introduced me to, you know, Eli, you know, also, you know, Derby, you know, and Jared at the time, you know, um, and basically we kind of got acquainted with each other and, you know, the rest is history, man. Right. I remember that because at this time, this is like my second day out here. Yeah. I see it on Facebook Marketplace or not Facebook Marketplace, but on those back Facebook groups. Yeah. Uh, I believe Derby and Jared, they was mentioning that they was having a free real estate group. Yeah. So at that time, I'm like. You know, I really didn't like networking so much, but yeah, I knew yeah. me coming out here, I have to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So that's when I went to that meetup group, and that's when I remember seeing you there. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. how we got connected, you sure. know. And we was all, like, basically babies at that time. Yeah. We didn't know yeah. what we was doing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. So now you watch this live, right? Mm-hmm. They're talking about land. Yes. What sparked that interest? What made you feel like, damn, I might be able to do this? So when I started to see, you know, how Derby was actually, you know, she actually invited people to, to a group at the time. And I joined the group, you know, a Facebook group after the course, right, after they did the live in Atlanta. Um, so she was actually just on there just like doing like just calling builders and things of that nature. And I was just watching it, bro. I was just watching it. I'm like, oh, so that's how you do it, things and that. And um, so I started to do it, you know, and, you know, I remember she used to say, you got to call 40, 50 builders a day. And I used to be like, okay, you know, I got to call this. <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot of builders. That is I'm going to do it, yeah. you know. And um, But also she was, she was um, offering her, you know, builders criteria at the time. Oh, okay. To kind of like make deals while you're actually looking at, you know, um, looking for builders. Mm-hmm. So at the time she had a builder in Palm Bay paying a certain amount. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to buy a list. I don't have the money for a CRM yet. So I'm going to just contact him on True People Search and just call him one by one, you know, on my phone. How much was that list? So that list was about like a hundred bucks okay. at the time, you know, um, and you know, basically it worked out because I, I think probably after my 50th person I talked contacted in sellers, you know, I came across this guy, you know, it was in Palm Bay. The property was, I could never forget this. The property was well accepted. And um, the, the guy was like, oh, you know, he wanted like 7,000 at the time. Mm. And um, I remember that Derby and Jared's buyer was paying 12,000. Mm. For well incentive lots so I'm like okay this might be one this might be a deal but yeah. bring it to him so um, I, I negotiated with him things that nature he said 7,000 okay cool and then from there you know um, I basically you know got a contract together I you know talked with you know um, Jared and Derby to kind of like see how to go through the contract because I didn't know how to go through a contract right you know so they helped me with that and um, the builder wanted it at 12,000 and we got that thing locked up at the end of the year 2021, no, 2020, um, December, and um, we closed on January 8th of 2021 for $5,000, and mm. they gave me money in hand. It was that's, a JV deal. It was, that's what made it real. I'm like, They oh, gave you that God. five Gs in hand. I know that felt good. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. It was crazy. So, yeah, so that's what really kind of really, really motivated me. To kind of like, okay, wholesale land is like my focus. Forget houses. So at this time, did you even close a house deal? No, I didn't. Mm. I didn't close a house deal because I'm like, man, these people don't know what they want to do. You got to go to the house, walk through the house, things of that nature. You know, you 
don't know what you're walking up on. You right. Know? So, that is true, you especially know? in Florida. Yeah, for real. You know, you might have somebody in the in the, in the band or something like that, you know, camping out. you like, oh, man, I'm bad. You know what yeah. so, But nah, so land was just way more simpler, you know, and you didn't have to go to the property. You didn't have to know where it was. Just know that your builder wants it and you get it for a lower price. You know, you can sell it. Yeah. That's what was like the best. I'm like, man, I've never been a Palm Bay in my life. Yeah. And got that five thousand. So now you got that deal. That was a JV deal. Mm -hmm. Now did you start doing it yourself, or did you continue the JV? I started. I continued the JV. So I was like, you know what? At the time, I was like, I would just build a business around JV. Like, yeah, you know, and you know that was short lived though. You know, <laughs> but I remember I came across a few more lots that you know Derby and Jared was on there. You know, having builders in. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we found some and then some of them just like, they were good deals until they weren't. Mm -hmm. And then like the feasibility study came back, like, oh, it's wetlands, oh, it's a tortoise. I'm like, I started to get discouraged. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, oh, man. So I went back to my old reliable, just like not being consistent and just, you know, basically taking an L as a permanent L mm -hmm. instead of understanding that, you know, you're going to have L's in this business. You just got to keep moving. That's what comes with you know, just real estate together. And I wasn't ready to learn that. Yeah. You know, so. So from that point, right now, you got that first deal. The second, third one, tortoises, feasibility, go yeah. for tortoises. Like, things is not working out. Right. You got discovered. Yeah. When did you start picking it back up? Like, all right, I got to get back in this game. I'm t so I, I actually started picking it up. It was around that same time Christmas next year, that 2021, I was working at UPS at the time. Mm -hmm. Just got married. You know, um, it, was, it was our first year, you know, basically a one year anniversary. And um, I was working at UPS and around that time we have a thing called peak season. So peak season where you kind of get on the truck with the drivers and kind of help them to drop off packages. So at the time, um, I seen this one builder, you know, um, once I got off of work, I was preloading. I used to put boxes inside the trucks. I seen uh, after that I'm usually still like still try to look at buyers. So at this time I seen a small like boutique buyer, like smaller smaller builder. Yeah. And um he was um buying lots in um Port St. Lucie at the time. And I knew remember Did you that. call him or I called him. Okay. So you I see his sign? I seen he purchased something and I and I looked it up on the county property appraiser. Okay. And I looked up the the LLC, I see there's a pattern here. And I looked it up on Google, and he just so happened to have a number. And I reached out to him. He's like, yeah, I'm buying lots out there. And at the time, you know, builders are not buying around the holidays and stuff like that. They're mm -hmm. closing up shop because they met their quotas and stuff, getting yeah. ready for next year. He was buying in around Christmas and anything like that. He never stopped buying. Yeah. So, okay, so I started to actually, like, find, you know, lots, you know, from, you know, um, basically Facebook Marketplace or Zillow and things of that nature. And um, I was locking up deals while I was on the truck with the driver mm. and, and sent him over to him and he was buying them. I'm like, oh crap. I think that year before Christmas, I made around 18,000. Just around that time frame, just and, from being on the truck with the driver. And this is all, like this is not you even putting money into marketing. No. This is all you using Facebook Marketplace. Yep. And Google yeah. from finding that buyer. Yeah. I want to highlight this because a lot of people, you know, I do free classes every week, right? Yeah. And I tell people in my free class, like last year, 2020, I made up to 30000 just using Facebook Marketplace and Google. Yeah. Finding the seller on Facebook and then finding the builder on Google. And this is what you're doing yeah. on the back of the truck in UPS, y'all. Yeah. Like, I need y'all to really understand this. He's working a job on the field, locking up deals on his phone because he has a builder. So let's talk about one of those deals. Yeah. So I actually had a deal recently, you know, the Facebook market deal. Um, I, I closed on a matter of fact, Monday that just passed. You know, I found it on Facebook marketplace, you know, um, I checked the dude out or whatever and, um, he was like, listen, I'm only I'm only going to give it to you if you put down five thousand dollars or his money deposit. Mm. And at the time, you know, I was I was like, I just so happened to have that. So I was like, my builder wants it already. He told me they want it already at this price. 
you know, and it's at a good price, so I'm gonna just risk it and just do it. And um, basically, we got him the contract. I sent the, the wire for the five thousand dollars, and um, we closed on it. They sent my wire back, and they sent me my assignment fee. Oh, my. What What was the price you had the seller, and what was the price you had the builder? So I had the seller at ninety eight thousand, which was his asking. Yeah, you know, and then my builder was paid one hundred and five. Oof. So like I made you know seven racks on that. So like, and that was on Monday, and it was it was amazing because I'm like, man, somebody else could have got this deal if I just wasn't quick enough. So I know I had to just like seize the moment and not let that just go by because of a big large earnings money deposit. Right, it was worth the risk. Exactly. So let's highlight that because there's two things I feel like you did right. You went on Facebook Marketplace. You contacted the guy mm-hmm. a free way, y'all. A free way. He contacted the guy. And like you said, the quickness, yeah. right? He gave you that option. He was like, you either going to put 5000 down <laughs> and get this possible deal or not. Yeah. And you took that risk because you could have lost that $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. You know, putting that earnest money because what if your builder didn't buy? Exactly. Right? So sometimes you got to take that necessary risk to make the money on the back end. You made 7000 from that deal, right? For sure, for sure. That's lit. What was that, Monday? Yeah, it was Monday. <laughs> and it's crazy, right? So the same play that I was doing last year, and I made up to 30000 he's still doing today. Yeah. And he made 7000 from it. You know, that's... Let me... That's fire. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I'm about to start doing it yeah, again because yeah. hey, it's, it's, it's money sleep. out here. Don't sleep. Yeah, for sure, man. It definitely is. You know, it's just... It's just amazing. You know, opportunities are everywhere. So I seen that you posted in my group about like a month ago. Yeah. That you got a deal for 12500 or something like that. 10000 10, 10500 yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that deal. So the crazy thing about this deal is that before um, in January, you know, I was, I had it locked up, thought I was talking to, to the seller. And it just so happened to be somebody else impersonating the seller. You know, and we, said we had to cancel it, right? But the realtor reached out to me, you know, basically giving me a proposition. Hey, we can come at this price. My builder wasn't paying that type of price at the time. So I was like, nah, we just going to stick a fork in it. So um, around June, I was like, you know what? I think I still got that realtor's number. Let me see if they, you know, basically are still interested. Because my builder just went, just updated their prices yeah. to like, uh, what, 100, I think 100,000 at the time. So I was like, you know what, are you still interested? You know, um, and it was like, yeah, you know, we're, we're still open to actually, you know, getting offers, but, you know, it has to be very high. And in my head, I'm already kind of like thinking like, oh, they're not serious or whatever. But, mm-hmm. you know, I still was talking with them and things of that nature. And then I was, I, I finally said, you know what, I can have you represent me, you know, as well so you can get the full commission. Mm-hmm. Once I said that to her, she started to, work on my behalf like crazy she's like oh no don't give up this and that you know come at this price come at this price and uh, we basically finally got it to i think it was 556 556 thousand dollars it was six lots all together right and it was on a roll that you wouldn't think a builder would pay for it. Mm-hmm. but the the lots was were going on sides of, of where houses were built so it worked out and um my, my builder was paying um 566 500. So I made 10,500 off of it. The realtor did all the paperwork, you know, and basically the seller paid her the commission and I walked away with my 10,000. That's slick, bro. Sure. And you did six live package deal. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I was, I would ask you this because I feel like people that just come into the game, right? If they come across that deal and they see that it's for $550,000, mm-hmm. they may be nervous. They be like, I don't have this type of money. So what made you, you know, overcome that fear? Uh, it's, the thing is, like, I, I realize, like, they're the, the seller or the realtor or whatever, they're in between me getting the money. So I made sure I understood that I'm not letting nobody get in front of me of getting what's mine. You know, so, like, if it's, if it's me talking to the seller or me talking to the realtor, you know, if it's the price, I don't care about the price because if my builder wants it, at a price differentiation where I'm making a profit, it doesn't matter. It could be a million dollars. If my bill is paying 1.1, I'm locking it up. Yeah. You know, I'm, just, I'm willing to take that risk, you know, because it's worth it. You know, making $100,000, you don't make that every day. Right. You know, so I'm willing to risk things like that 
no matter what the price is, especially if my builder wants it at a significant profit. Okay. And there was another thing that you did that made that deal possible, right? Yeah. You told the realtor that you will pay her her full commission. Yeah. Which made her work harder, which is very, very smart. Yes. What made you think of that? So, uh, it was crazy. Um, I remember Jared actually told me about that at the time. And I was like, I was really leery of that because I'm like, I thought wholesalers and realtors didn't like each other. You know, so I was scared to actually talk to realtors in that capacity. And that was like some years ago, you know, but I was thinking about that at the time when I told her that I was like, let me just use that strategy. And that's how I came up with it. And then it worked. Like I just asked the question, you know, and she came with the answer that I wanted right at the time and I was like man and now she just brought me two more deals you know that I just locked up this week mm. you know so what's now, the potential profit for those deals so 6,000 mm. so each like, no 6,000 6, for both 3,000 each okay so yeah so like and you know she's like I'm gonna constantly constantly keep on giving you deals because we closed on that first one which made her like 16,000 in commission so now I'm like number one on her mind when it comes down to lots in that particular area. So now she's my boots on the ground. And she's working with the seller behalf? Or? Yeah. She's wow. working with the seller behalf. She brought it over to me. It wasn't on market. You know, she showed, She basically let me know, like, hey, listen, do you want it before it goes to the market? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. My builder said we want it. Let's lock it up. And now we're looking to close on the 18th of September. <laughs> I need y'all to understand, right? Like, really pay attention. He just gave y'all two free ways on how y'all could get deals. One, the Facebook marketplace. Two, connecting with these realtors. Let them know, listen, I'll pay you the full commission. Yeah, you may take a price cut, but now he just got two, three more deals because of that one relationship with one realtor. There's a million realtors across this nation. If Imagine if he does that same relationship with a realtor in Arizona, a realtor in North Carolina. This is how you get to five to 10 to 15 deals a month without you putting in your hard work. Cause you don't wanna just uh, do one avenue when you're looking for deals. You don't wanna just you know market yourself. You wanna post your builder's criteria. You wanna look on Facebook, offer up, connect with realtors. There's a thousand ways to get deals out here, all right? So sure. that, that, that's fire. I like sure, that man. strategy. Sure. So let's say, do you have, you know, uh, like you said you have a younger brother, right? Yeah. So let's say you go back to 18 years old, right? You have $1,000 to your name. Hmm. What are you going to do to get a deal? Facebook market. You know, Facebook market, you know, constantly contact builders. Like that's like my number one thing. You know, the more builders you get, you know, the more you can kind of go out there and go hunt for. So, like, and you just got to look at it like that because, like, I feel like calling the builders is the hard part. Once you get that hard part over, everything else is just plug and play. You know, so, like, and, you know, I've always you've been taught that from Derby. You know, like, she, you know, you should tell us that all the time. Like, you want to contact as many builders as you can because once you get those, you know, then, you know, the sellers will be easy because you know exactly what you need to lock it up for and things of that nature. It's plug and play, man. What advice would you give to your younger self? Start real estate sooner. You know, mm. don't like, don't let, don't, you don't despite your, your youth, you know? So, cause like, you know, you're 18, you know, um, you think you can't do certain things, but it's not even about your age. You know, it's just about your work ethic. You know, you just got to understand that, listen, you can do it. Once you understand mentality, age ain't nothing but a number. What are a couple of challenges one or two challenges you had to overcome within this business? Stop being scared to talk to people. I think that's one of the biggest challenges that I had to face, just contacting them and basically being scared, you know, um, to just cold call and things of that nature. But I got over that once I realized that they were literally in between me getting a check. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not letting that happen no more. You know, and I was like, I don't care if you curse me out. I don't care if you... You know, call me everything besides the child of God. You know, I'm gonna call you next week. <laughs> you know, and until you say, "Don't call me," you know, um, and just having that mentality, that winning mentality, that relentless mentality, really helps you to get the deal at the end of the day. Yeah, because I like to tell people like 
the only thing they could say is yes or no. So, or they could maybe scream, no, don't call me again. That's it. But at the end of the day, that's it. That's it. They can't touch you. You're not seeing them face to face. It's literally like one question, would you consider a cash offer for your land? Could make you twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> that one question, y'all. Yeah. Get over that fear. So, what is your vision for this business? Well, my my vision is as of right now is to consistently make five figures on a monthly basis. So, once I start to do that, you know, obviously, once you meet those goals, you actually, you know, want to reach new goals or or set new goals and things of that nature. Um, so right now it's just really just consistently making, you know, five figures, you know, each month, cause that will replace, you know, what I'm actually doing at the moment. Mm. And I could, I could completely focus on this and really, you know, scale my business to a level that I, I think will make me comfortable, you know, financially. Okay. Can you share a moment where you felt like extremely proud and fulfilled within this business? All this time doing this business? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I really felt proud literally on that deal, that $10,000 deal, because I honestly feel like a lot of deals fell in my lap and I've just been in the right place at the right time. You know, but with this particular deal, you know, I feel like I really did the legwork. I really felt like I reached out to the agent. I knew how to negotiate and things of that nature, you know, and I was through the whole process from the beginning to end. So I was really, really proud of, you know, what I did in that moment and realized what I can do, mm. you know, and now I'm just, now I'm just in a position where I'm constantly asking myself questions and I'm trying to answer them. Do you remember a time where you felt like self-doubt <laughs> and what did you do to overcome that? Man, yeah, I definitely, um, I felt self-doubt when deals were just, were under contract and they just fell through. Like when you, when you have a, a moment where you can make $10,000 and $5,000 and you know you need it, you know, and you don't know how else everything else is going to come through and your the job that you're working is just giving you $200 a week or $300 a week, you know, and things of that nature, you know, that junk hurts. So that really kind of depleted me, you know, but I used to call, I used to talk to Amber all the time. Like me and Amber used to call on the phone all the time. And she used to like motivate me and things of that nature because me and her was doing deals too. So, you know, just in the same markets and things of that nature. And um, yeah, man, that really kind of helped me to get back into it because I've seen her closing deals consistently. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, I know I can do this. We were working at the same place, you know, at that one moment, you know, and I know that I can do this. So that's what kind of motivated me to like stop, like never give up. I like that. And shout out to Amber. Yeah, shout but out to my dog. <laughs> I tell people this all the time. You want to create an environment where you're around people that's either the same level or better than you. Yes. Right? Because yes. as you see in them grind and as you see in them close deals, yes. it's going to motivate you or you're going to hate. But right. if you have the mindset that where it motivates you, it's going to keep you going. There's times, right? There's times where I don't be wanting to go to the gym, right? Right. But... When I go to the gym and I'm playing and somebody busts my ass, mm -hmm. that shit is like, oh, no, nah, I can't. Now I got to be consistent because I got to come back at him. Right. Right. So with you seeing her close deals, it's like, oh, it's possible. Mm -hmm. I close deals myself. Yeah. But she's continuously closing deals. Yeah. So I, I got to yeah. keep on going. For sure. I like that. So how do you balance, you know, your personal life and business life? Because I know you have a family, yes. a wife. So how do you balance that? with you know starting your business so I, I make sure that i'm intentional with my time you know i think that's one of the biggest things just being intentional you know as an entrepreneur you know and um basically investor or whatever or business owner you know time is like the most valuable thing that you have you know and you can't afford to waste it so i'm really you know that's how i really kind of like just sit down and just make sure i'm leveling everything out you know, by making sure I'm not taking away time from my wife and my daughter and giving all my time to my business. Because then, you know, I'll make money, but I'm not really in a happy place because my joy, you know, lies in my, my family. You know, I want to make my family, you know, happy and things of that nature and share that with them. So I can make money, you know, and put all my focus there, but then I'm depleting them of what they need. 
So, you know, I make sure that, you know, I'm doing that and spending time and having date night. Like I have date night tonight, Where? you know, so we have date night tonight, you know, so, you know, although like, hey, you know, I'll tell her, hey, babe, we got a closing, you know, and then on closing day, you know, we'll, we'll do something. We'll mm. have a glass of wine or something like that. That's you know, fire. So just to kind of just celebrate because she's been with me before I even had a deal. Mm. You know, so. So what inspired you to become an entrepreneur? My mother. Mm. My mother, man, like I, I and she's a, she's a business coach now, you know, um, she, she, oh, you got the plug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could give you all that, you know, after this, but you know, she, she's a business coach, man. She coached a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, and, um, I just see her pour into people, man, and just have a selfless mentality. And that really kind of inspired me to like, I want a piece of that, mm. you know, so that, you know, helped me to understand that, listen, entrepreneurship is not about monetary gain. It's about being a solution to the problem, mm. you know, and talk about it. And that's, and that's what I understood. And I realized that the problem in this situation, what we do is that builders can't do this by themselves. They can't mm-hmm. be everywhere at, at once, you know? So in order to be omnipresent, they have to use us. Mm-hmm. That's where we fail in. That's where we become a solution. So, I understood the assignment and now I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing it to the fullest capacity. Yep. I tell people the quickest way to make some money in 30 days is build a connection with a builder. If you have a connection with a builder, there's no reason why you should be broke because yeah. now they're going to give you exactly what they need. Now, all you have to do is learn the, the language of real estate, of land. You understand that and you understand how to contact these sellers, vacant landowners. You can connect the dots. That's all you have to do. Yeah. So sure. where can the people follow you? Yo, you can follow me on Instagram, you know, at Jacory the Realtor. On, we're on Facebook, you know, Jacory Broughton. I'm not hard to find, man. You know, you know, if you have any questions about land and things of that nature, you know, or anything real estate related, you know, I'm always here to help. Yes, sir. And if you guys want to learn how to flip land, I do free classes every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. All right. If you want the link, I want you guys to text land at 813-687-8867. Game changes. (laughs) Yes, sir.